Yo guys, we need to talk. Listen, enough is enough. There's something serious that I just can't keep running from anymore. Let's go for a walk. So there's a lot of awesome makers out there that I love watching. You've got the Hacksmith making real life lightsabers, freaking crazy cool. Simone Yetch making deal with it glasses, meme-tastic. Peter Schiepel making two scale electric airplanes, what? And Alan Pan making all types of insane fictional builds, my hero. But you see, I've always looked at this type of stuff as crazy complex, and anytime anyone would ask me something like, hey, you should blah 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 electrical engineering, I instantly go, no way, I am not smart enough to do that type of stuff. But truthfully, this goes against my number one philosophy. Anything you practice, you get good at. The end. So this week, let's take that plunge, guys. Let's start to learn about electronics and all that stuff with some sort of project. Now, where do we begin? When you're looking to learn anything new, it's common practice to find the Hello World project for that platform or community or field. For example, the Hello World to HTML is literally displaying text on a web page. The Hello World to a game engine is likely to get some sort of agent to move up, down, left, and right. The Hello World to machine learning is fitting some algorithm to basic linear regression. You get the pattern. Hello World projects are usually simple projects meant to give you a basic understanding and foundation to build on top of. And it seems the usual Hello World project for electronics is to light up an LED with a button. Cool. But I can't get jiggy with this, man. I don't know, but I think I have the logic know-how to dream bigger than if A is one, then B is one. So to hell with this Hello World project. Let's challenge ourselves with something a bit more difficult. But first, we need some sort of inspiration. And I know just the thing. So I was at the arcade a few days back, and there's this one game that I can't get enough of. It's that one game called Cyclone. Have you heard of it? The light goes round and round and you press the button right when the light is in front of your button. And listen, I don't care what anyone says, but that is probably one of the most rewarding games on the planet. And trust me when I say this, but I am a pro at that game. But I swear to Neptune that that game is programmed to swindle you. I've hit right on the light multiple times and it just skips right to the next light. Shenanigans? Shenanigans I say. Actually, Mark Roper did an extremely rigorous test to find out if this was true or not, and, of course, his results yielded that Cyclone did cheat. <laughs> if you don't know more about his study, I highly suggest to check out his video, link in the description. Anywho, how about instead of if A is one, then B is one program, let's create some sort of clone of that game that's two players. So then, I can prove my proness by challenging people and going undefeated. Yeah, but us begin. Day 1 began with watching some tutorials on how to light LED using a Raspberry Pi. A Raspberry Pi simply because I've owned a Raspberry Pi for quite a while now, and I found no reason to buy a new microcontroller. And for those of you who aren't aware, the Pi is a brand of microcontrollers, which are like many computers of sorts. But after about an hour of research, I thought I was ready. So I headed to the happiest place on earth, Maker's Disneyland. And having no real idea what I was doing, I picked up some stuff mentioned in the tutorials. A breadboard, some LED lights, some buttons, some wires, and some resistors at random. Furthermore, I was thinking about trying to 3D print some sort of casing or something, but I thought that the box that my phone came in would have been perfect for this project. So I'm going to try and use that. I had got back to the office with all this stuff and I realized my goof number one. How in the hell am I going to connect a male wire to a male wire? Ugh. Annoyed, I ran back to Maker's Disneyland, got some male to female wires, and after rewatching many tutorials, I eventually got my light all set up correctly on the board. Next step was to pipe up my protected pie to put a popping pie program for this perfect portable project. <laughs> Sorry. Ever since I learned about alliteration as a kid, I never skip an opportunity to make one. They're so stupid, they just make me laugh. <laughs> as always, I digress. Next step was to boot up my Raspberry Pi and write a Python script instructing this light what to do. And that's when I realized my goof number two. When I was working on a previous project using the same Raspberry Pi, I had loaded a different OS onto it than what I needed for this project. So I had to halt everything so that I can reset my Pi. 
but after a good while of waiting, we had arrived. I got the vanilla Pi OS back on board and immediately set up SSH on it, which stands for Secure Shell, which allows for me to not have to plug in a monitor, a mouse, and a keyboard just to access my Pi. I could control it from any PC while on the same Wi-Fi. I quickly wrote the light program, grabbed some just-in-case water, thanks to the sound device from Alan Pan, and then I let her fly. And it worked. Kinda. The light was just way too dim for some unknown reason. Even though the camera makes it look a lot brighter than it actually is. But a little defeated and definitely over it, I went home for the night and decided to pick it up in the morning. Day 2, I started by swapping out everything. The board, the wires, the light, the pins on the Pi, and nothing. But one thing I didn't change was the resistor. This little thing. Why? Well, because again, not knowing what I was doing, I only bought one type of resistor at random. So I consulted all you smart folks on Twitter and my great goodness, I love you guys. I was quickly schooled on so many things. Lesson number one. There are more than one type of resistors, and the colors on them actually mean something. <laughs> the colors aren't just different artist designs. <laughs> but it turned out I was using a 5100 ohms resistor, while most were suggesting a 2 to 300 ohms resistor for LEDs. I was using a 25 times overkill. Talk about new work. I again head back to Maker's Disneyland with this knowledge. Yeah, I'm not that efficient. But I got a bundle pack of resistors. Got back to the office, and still being rebellious about learning the resistor color codes and all that stuff, I just test out a bunch of them at random hoping to get lucky. But of course, I didn't get good results. At this point, I had to go to a little event that Diana Physics Girl was hosting. Oh, hey Diana. But Kyle Kitzmiller was there, and Kyle runs shredlights.com, which means he does this type of stuff for a living. So I consulted him with a lot of my problems I was having, and that really helped accelerate my understanding. As soon as I got back to the office, I studied the resistor color codes, which, side note, is a lot easier than it appears. And shortly after, I had my light brighter than my chances of getting YouTube to notify my subscribers. <clears throat> Soon thereafter, I have my input button working, but again, I can't get jiggy with this, man. And a little later after that, I had my button input mapped to a row of lights. And yeah, we were on a superb track. After hours of jamming, I was able to get my lights to pulsate back and forth. But also, with a portable battery and a run at boot up script, I was able to essentially give it an on and off state and make it portable. You're telling me that I've made this thing? What? I was beyond stoked to be able to portably walk around with my robot. Yo, I was addicted to the progress. But at this point, it was pretty late. So the first second I was able to calm down, I headed home for some sleep. Day three, and I headed back to Maker's Disneyland because I ran out of male to female wires. Yeah, I'm not that efficient. But I got back to the office and immediately started to focus on my main issue, which was one of the Python functions that I was using called sleep did not listen for input. Right. This function pretty much halts the entire script from executing, which includes halting listening to any and all input which will not work for a game requiring such quick reaction time. No bueno, mi amigas. And because I'm not a maniac, I stopped using the primitive terminal IDE and switched back to my main PC to use Visual Studio Code as my IDE to debug and figure this out. And after a little thinking, brainstorming, and testing, success. I had a working solution. I pretty much created my own internal clock and used this clock to regulate the entire system. And check out that responsiveness. Buzzing. I hooked back up my lights and... Ladies and gentlemen, we got them. Yeah. I increased the speed and now we have almost a fully functional game. Connected my lights to wires to give them a little more length, added two button support, and a main menu state of sorts. Then I started to design the robot's layout in Photoshop. This was done by reading all the dimensions on the lights, buttons, the box, and whatnot, and using those dimensions in Photoshop. Once it was all done, I printed it out, and would you look at that, 
a perfect fit. And by this point, it was pretty late in the day, so I packed up everything and ended day three. Day four and I am pumped because today is the day that we finished the project. Enough delays, I had a plan. Head to Home Depot for some spray paint. Pick up my favorite colors, pastel yellow and pastel blue. Get back to the office, use the layout from last night to drill the holes for the lights and buttons. Spray paint the robot. Then finish the day hot gluing and whatnot, all the things into place to finish out the night with a complete robot. <laughs> and everything went according to plan until I got to the spray painting. Here I was thinking I was just going to spray paint the robot and in 30 minutes or less it will be dry and ready for hot gluing. But lesson number two, paint takes a really long time to dry and I mean a really long time to dry. Some people were suggesting that I wait some 24 hours even. So thanks to this lack of insight, that was pretty much all that I can do all day. So this day doesn't count. Shh, don't fight it. Day 4.1 and I started off frantically going back to Home Depot. Yeah, I'm not that efficient. But I had to give in and buy a soldering gun that I'm only going to use one time, whatever. Got back to the office and tried to fix the final issue that I had. So I was connecting the buttons into a female wire, but it wasn't quite a snug fit. They easily disconnected, which would be a major issue. So I originally thought that I could electrically tape them together, <sighs> talk about new work, but of course that didn't work. So I thought I would just buy a solder and just solder them together, but well, wait a second. These are my last male to female wires, which means if I ruin them, I have to go all the way back to Maker's Disneyland. Usually it's gung-ho first and ask questions later, but because this is going to cost me more money, I think I'm not going to gung-ho and ask questions immediately. Anywho, I went to Skillshare.com to try and learn some basics on soldering, hashtag ad incoming, and praise candy that I did not gung-ho it, because I learned that I need something called flux, which removes chemicals or something like that, and actual solder that joins the metal together. All of these years, I thought the equation was simply hot metal, hot metal, more, more hot, hot metal. metal. <laughs> so I scooted over to a local hardware store to get the remaining items, picked this product up, I don't know what I'm doing, got back and tried to do some soldering with my just in case water. And yo. I tried for a whole 30 minutes on just one connector and failed miserably. I'm pretty sure that I picked up the wrong flux. I don't know, I didn't have time to go back for more. I was on a time crunch, what are you gonna do? But lesson number three, solder stinks bad. <laughs> Oh my god. I don't know if it's all solder, but my goodness, this smell is horrendous. But whatever, I'll come back to this issue later. For I had another smaller issue that had been killing me. So it turned out that these buttons only worked if they had some sort of support under them. I tried hot gluing the buttons from underneath because I desperately wanted the buttons to protrude out from under. But I don't think I had the proper support and all that stuff to hold it from underneath. So instead of burning even more time, I just gave in and hot glued them right on top. Fed the wires to the hole that was meant for the button, and it's not how I imagined, but problem solved. Now, back to my soldering issue. I was unsure what I was going to do about this, because surely I couldn't just mid-game have the buttons unplug. But that's when a really smart idea came to mind. What if I simply just clamped the connections together using pliers? Gave it a try and, wow, it worked better than perfectly. Tug on these bad boys and they aren't going anywhere. So I did that for all connections, hot glued everything into place, connected all the wires back, plugged the Pi into the power bank, and voila, our robot hath been completed. And holy hell, what a crazy cool feeling this is. And now that our robot is complete, let me give you a full walkthrough. So this robot is an optional two player game. You can play one player if you really want to. But on boot up, it starts off in the main menu state in which it just slowly bounces back and forth. Both players must press the buttons at the same time. All the lights will light up to indicate that you started a game, and then the light will start zipping back and forth at a faster speed. Each player wants to score on their respective opponent's side. So this side needs to score by stopping on this green light, and respectively, 
this side needs a score by stopping on this green light. And every time the light stops, it will choose a light at random to start from, as well as a direction to prevent cheating tactics from forming. And whenever you score a point, the green light will flash how many points you have, and the first to five wins. And that's pretty much all there's to it. Also, there's an exit input. If both players hold their respective buttons for about five seconds each, then it will go back to the main menu state. What I love about this is had I done it using only software, it would have took me just about an hour to make and it would have been extremely boring. In fact, I made the same game here using JavaScript in about 20 minutes and it's unexplainably boring. But if we take the same game and put it in physical form, at the fact that it's completely physical based makes it so much cooler for some strange reason and also a more rewarding result for me. I cannot begin to tell you guys how jazz hands I am about completing this project. But the moment you've all been waiting for. All that's left now is to definitively prove that that Cyclone Arcade game cheats. And to prove that I'm a pro at this type of game by 1v1ing some noobs. Which is pretty much everyone that is me, let's be honest. <laughs> trying to get the dot on that side on my side and i just keep pressing it until you get the five and nothing's gonna pop out on me no. or nothing like that all right and then it flashes how many points you have all right let's do it okay it's a, it's a little jank but but you'll you get the point let's do this first the five wins oh 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 okay all right all right all right all right all right oh yeah what's oh, that yeah. one two points two points <laughs> all right all right so fun. oh dang it come on Oh, nice, nice. Oh, nice. Two points. Two. I see you. I got a customer in here. Oh, let's go for the win. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> there we go. Three oh. points. Three, three. Three, three. I must win this for my family. There we go. One, two, three, four points. All right, gets the game point. Oh, nice, nice. Did she get it? She got a point? Yay! <laughs> nice defense. Nice oh. defense. Nice defense. Oh, there it is. Good game. Good game, man. Good game. <laughs> Oh, come on. Oh, come on. There it oh, okay. is. Okay, okay, okay. Ah, you got one more go. point. You got one more point, one more point. What is that? Oh, there we go. One, two, three, four points. All right, I have game point. Sid, you got, nice, very nice. Two points for me. Nice. Go, Sid. <laughs> that's game. That's Wait, game. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I think that's awesome. Good job, Sid. That's super Thank cool. Thank you. Event. This is a comeback right here. This is a comeback. Come on, come on, come on. Oh. Yo, good game. <clears throat>oh my goodness what fun this has been <laughs> projects like these sometimes make me regret not going to college i don't know i just feel like i would have struggled a lot less being able to ask questions and would be able to share this excitement with more than just my empty pizza box <laughs> but whatever i'm very happy with the results and hope that you guys enjoyed this week's episode Yo guys, I want to give a huge thanks to our sponsor for this episode. You know like when you go look for a tutorial or something on say like YouTube and you might run into a couple of these before finding something good? <laughs> Or these? Okay guys, so for today, uh, I'm going to teach you guys how you can go about learning this. Uh, first thing you need to do is just go with your, 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 your. Well, this is my personal observation, but you won't find that type of stuff on their platform. And I think the reason is because they don't incentivize teachers to get the most views. On Skillshare, teachers want to give you a good lesson and in return, get good reviews. Now, anytime that I'm approached by a sponsor, I only ever want to secure two things. One, something useful for you guys, the audience. And two, something that'll help me reinvest back to the channel. Which, at the fact that you're hearing this ad, means that I have good news for you. Skillshare is offering the first half a thousand people who sign up using the link skl.sh jabrils two months completely 
completely free. Which means you can take some courses yourself and decide if you think it's worth it or not to continue your subscription at $9.99 a month. And lastly, I'd like to suggest the course that helped me with a few things on this project. Raspberry Pi Bootcamp for the Beginner by Lee Assam. Link to that is also in the description. And that's all for this week guys. Please be sure to subscribe, hit that bell icon, and follow me on Twitter and Instagram for a fun time or your money back guarantee. Other than that, I hope to see you all next week, but whatever the case may be, remember to always feed your curiosity.